Animals range in size, from the microscopic insects to the gigantic whales of the sea. They are found everywhere. They may have fins for swimming in the water, legs to walk on land, or wings for flight in air. They may croak or chirp to court the female of their kind, growl or hiss to scare off their enemies, or move in a dance to a rich source of nectar. Some see only the visible spectrum of light, others have ultraviolet or infrared vision. Some are practically blind, perceiving their environment with a sharp sense of hearing to capture the echoes of the sound they produce. Others have a keen sense of smell to follow a peculiar scent. Some feed on plants, others eat other animals, or even members of their own kind. Their body covering is modified in various ways, from shells to feathers, from scales to hairs. They swim and dive, they slither and crawl, they fly and glide. They whistle and hoot, chirp and chatter, bark and howl. With the many different parts their bodies are made of, the many different things they do, why are all of these organisms placed together in the same kingdom? Good day everyone, I am Mom Jenny, your science teacher. Come and join me in studying the diversity of Kingdom Animalia. On this video lesson, we will explore the amazing richness of form, color, sounds, and behavior of animals. Animals enrich our planet by their unique characteristics, their place in the food web, and their role in the maintenance of balance in our environment. I hope that you will appreciate the fact that this tremendous diversity did not happen in an instant, but it was a product of millions of years of evolution. At the end of this video lesson, you should be able to give the distinguishing characteristics of sponges, nidorians, flatworms, nematodes, mollusks, annelids, arthropods, echinoderms, and chordates. Kingdom Animalia, also called Metazoa, is the largest of the five kingdoms based on number of species representatives. Over 1.2 million of the 1.7 million species of organisms documented worldwide belong to the animal kingdom. Animals inhabit practically every conceivable habitat on Earth. It is therefore not surprising for animals to develop immense diversity in form and function that adapts them to varied conditions in the many different places where they are found. What characters do they have in common? Here are the general characteristics of animals. Number one, their cells are eukaryotic, meaning there is a true nucleus bounded by a membrane that separates the nuclear materials from the cytoplasm. Number two, encased only in a plasma membrane, their cells do not have the rigid protection of a cell wall. Number three, their bodies are multicellular. Their cells usually form tissues that may be organized into organs and organ systems. Number four, they move actively in fast and complex ways. They may swim and dive, they slither and crawl, they fly and glide, they jump, they walk, and a lot more. They are heterotrophs, obtaining their material and energy needs by feeding on other organisms. If plants are autotrophs because they are photosynthetic, 
because they can produce their own food. Animals are heterotrophs or heterotrophic organism. Heterotrophic organism because they cannot manufacture their own food. Instead, they obtain the energy that they need by feeding on other organisms. They respire aerobically, meaning it requires oxygen when they harness the energy from food. Number seven, their body cells are deployed. Each kind of chromosomes in every cell is represented by a pair. This diploid phase is dominant in their life cycle. Number eight, though sexually reproducing organisms, many animals can reproduce asexually as well. There are different types of asexual reproduction. We have budding, as in hydra. We also have fragmentation in some species of flatworms. We also have regeneration, which is demonstrated by a sea star. When a sea star is cut into pieces, so that each arm has a portion of the central disc, each piece grows the rest of the central disc and the four other arms. Number nine, early stages of development involve a series of mitotic divisions to produce a multicelled embryo. For most animals, this embryo begins a solid ball of cells called marula, develops into a hollow ball of cells called blastula, and folds inward to form gastrula, which is a hollow sac with an opening at one end. Kingdom Metazoa is divided into 35 different phyla. We will discuss only nine major phyla. These phyla are described based on structural features such as body plan and symmetry, gut type, body cavities, and segmentation. Let us have the structural features of animals. Simple and complex form of multicellularity. All animals are multicellular. However, their cells may or may not be organized to form complex tissues, organs, and organ systems. Next, we have the body symmetry. Symmetry refers to a definite body shape. We have asymmetrical or irregular in shape such as in sponges, radial symmetry like the spokes of a wheel, third one we have bilateral symmetry wherein there are two equal sides such as in humans we have the right and the left side the dorsal and the ventral side the anterior and posterior or from head to tail which is what we call as the sepalization so we have here an example of the body symmetry of a sponge which is asymmetrical we have here a radially symmetrical organism and this one is a bilaterally symmetrical organism next we have the number of germ layers during embryonic development concentric body layers called germ layers are produced from which various tissues and organs develop these layers may be differentiated into an outer ectoderm, an inner endoderm, and a middle mesoderm. Diploblastic organisms has ectoderm and an endoderm, or the outer and the inner layer, whereas triploblastic organism has the three germ layers, namely the ectoderm, endoderm, and the mesoderm. Ectoderm develops into skin and into the nervous system. Also, it forms the exoskeleton of an organism. Endoderm develops into organs such as the digestive and the respiratory systems, while the endoderm forms the inner linings of organs and other organs such as the skeleton, the muscular, circulatory, reproductive, and the excretory systems.
Next, we have the internal body cavity, found in bilaterally symmetrical animals. Coelom, or the body cavity, are the fluid-filled space between the body wall and gut, which protects the internal organs. We have a coelomate, or no coelom, pseudocoelomate, wherein the body cavity between the mesoderm and the endoderm, also known as the false coelom, and the eucoelomate, or the cavity within the mesoderm, which allows for greater movement. So we have here the organisms which are considered as a coelomate, pseudocoelomate, and coelomate. Next, we have the segmentation. Segments are repeating body units. Each segment contains similar tissues or organs. All higher animals have some degree of segmentation. In earthworms, each ring is a distinct segment. Lobsters have developed specialized appendages on many segments. While fishes exhibit segmentation in their muscles and backbone. Based on the presence or absence of backbones, animals have been loosely divided into two popular groups. We have the invertebrates and the vertebrates. Invertebrates are animals without a backbone or bony skeleton. They range in size from microscopic mites and almost invisible flies to giant squid with soccer ball sized eyes. Invertebrates are classified based on their body structure, life cycle, and evolutionary history. Let's start with Phylum porifera, or the pore bearing animals, from the word porus, meaning pore, and ferre, meaning to bear. They are the simplest form of animal. Multicellular with asymmetrical bodies, possesses no true tissues or organs, and have great powers of regeneration. So here is an example of a sponge. They are marine organisms. Next, we have phylum nidaria or the stinging cell animals. From the word denied, meaning nettle, these are radially symmetrical organisms with distinct tissues that are organized to perform specialized functions including extracellular digestions and nerve-controlled body coordination. They exist in medusa type or polyp type. So here are some examples of uh, organisms under phylum nidarians. So we have here the jellyfish, the Portuguese manowar. Alright, we have here an example of organisms under phylum nidaria. Next we have phylum platyhelminthes, or the flatworms. From the word platys meaning flat and helmins meaning worm. They are bilaterally symmetrical, dorsal ventrally flattened worms. They are hermaphroditic and mostly parasitic. So here are some examples of organisms under phylum platyhelminthes. So we have here the free-living planaria and the flatworms. Phylum nematoda or the nema helminthes. They are also known as the roundworms. From the word nematos meaning thread and helmins meaning worm. Possess a pseudocele between the endoderm and the mesoderm and a complete one-way digestive tract provided with a mouth and anus. They are mostly endoparasitic meaning they live inside the body of other organisms. Here is an example of a nematode or a round worm. Next, we have phylum mollusca or the soft-bodied animals. From the word molluscus meaning soft, 
They are silomate animals whose soft bodies are organized into three regions, a muscular foot, a visceral mass where most of their organs are located, and a mantle that usually produces a protective shell. They are commonly represented by gastropods, bivalves, and cephalopods, many of which are economically valuable as human food sources. So we have here Phyla mollusca class gastropoda. A very good example is a snail. Next we have class bivalvia or the bivalves. Next we have the class cephalophoda that includes squids and octopus and even a cuttlefish. A cuttlefish is not a fish but a cephalopod. Next we have phylum annelida or the segmented worms. From the word annulus meaning ring are silomate worms whose body is made of similarly organized repeated segments. They are hermaphroditic and mostly free-living. Phylum Annelida includes the following representatives. We have the lich and the earthworm. Phylum Annelida also includes the sandworm. Next, we have Phylum Arthropoda or the jointed-legged or the jointed-footed animals. From the word arthron meaning joint and podos meaning foot. They are silomate animals with jointed segments and an exoskeleton made of chitin. They are classified into different groups according to the number of body segments and locomotor structures. The first group is what we call as class insecta. The insects are the largest group of arthropods. In fact, they are the most successful group of arthropods. They are the most numerous. They differ in the type of mouth parts, number of wings, and the type of metamorphosis. Insects has three pairs of legs and a pair of antenna. Next, we have the class Arachnida or arachnids. Arthropods comprising chiefly terrestrial invertebrates, including the spiders, scorpions, mites, and ticks, and having a segmented body divided into two regions of which the anterior bears four pairs of legs but no antennae. And finally, we have class crustacea. A crustacean has the following features. A segmented body with a hard exterior known as an exoskeleton, jointed limbs, each often with two branches and two pairs of antennae. So we have here the examples of crustaceans. One of the economic importance of class crustacea is that they are food sources to humans. And for the last group of invertebrates, we have the phylum echinodermata, or the spiny-skinned animals, from the word echinos, which means hedgehog, and derma, which means skin. Phylum echinodermata are spiny-skinned animals that possess a coelom and an exoskeleton. So they also exhibit the uterostome development. Bilaterally symmetrical when young, they only become radially symmetrical at adult stage. Here are some examples of organisms under phylum echinodermata. We have the sea cucumber, the starfish, the sea star, and the sea urchins. Next, we have animals under phylum chordata. From the word corda, meaning cord or string. The term chordate is used to refer to any animal belonging to the phylum chordata. We can define chordate as follows. 
The chordates are the class of animals that possess four anatomical features, namely 1. Notochord, number 2. Dorsal nerve cord, and number 3. Post anal tail, and number 4. Pharyngeal slits, at least during some part of their development into maturity. So let's start with class Agnatha, or the jawless fish. A, which means without, plus the Greek word natos, meaning jaw. Their jaws are absent, paired fins are generally absent too. Early species had heavy bony scales and plates in their skin, but these are not present in living species. Body is cylindrical and elongated like that of eel or snake. So here is an example of a jawless fish. A jawless fish, such as a lamprey, is a parasitic form of fish. Next, we have class chondrichthyes, or the cartilaginous fish. From the word chondros, meaning cartilage, and ichthyes, meaning fish. They are cold-blooded, their skin is tough, covered, with very small scales, they contain a pair of jaws. Their jaws are very powerful. They are mostly marine fishes. They lack air bladders, so they swim actively to avoid sinking. Examples are first, we have here the rays, sharks, and skates. So usually they are marine organisms. Next, we have class Ostichthyes, or the bony fish. From the word osteon, meaning bone, and ichthyes, meaning fish. They are cold-blooded, skeleton more or less bony, vertebrae are numerous, skin with mucous glands and embedded dermal scales. They have paired fins, their mouth with many teeth. Some species of bony fish are toothless and jaws are present. So here are some examples of uh, class Ostichthyes. Next we have class Amphibia. From the words Amphis meaning double and Bios meaning life. They are cold-blooded. They lay eggs which are small without shell and protected only by a jelly-like substance in water. Just like this one, eggs of a frog. Some species fertilize eggs externally, some internally. Their skin is smooth and slimy. Amphibians breathe through their skin, as well as their lungs in some cases. They keep their skin moist to withstand dry conditions on land and to supplement breathing through primitive lungs. Frogs lay hundreds of eggs. The tadpoles feed on small pine animals. Soon their fins begin to disappear, and they start to look like adult frogs. They begin to breathe through their lungs. Adult frogs spend most of the time in water. Nostrils are found on top of the frog's head so they can breathe while submerged in water. So here are some examples of uh, class amphibians in the Philippines. We have here the limbless Sicilians and species of frog. Class Reptilia From the word repere meaning to creep. They are cold-blooded. They stay in the sun to warm up and dig under the sand to cool off. Their body is covered with scales. Most of them lay eggs which are covered by a shell. An exception to this is the garter snake which does not lay eggs and instead gives birth to young. All species fertilize eggs internally. They keep their skin moist to withstand dry conditions on land and to supplement breathing through primitive lungs. The Philippines has 352 known species of reptiles. So we have here the green sea turtle, snakes, monitor lizards, iguanas, we 
have the Philippine crocodile, we have here the gecko, the sting, and snakes. Next, we have the class avis. From the word avis, meaning bird. They are warm-blooded, body is covered with feathers, the legs have scales, they lay eggs which are covered by a shell. All birds have wings, but not all birds fly. Example is the penguins and ostrich. The wings, claws, and beaks of birds exhibit variation. These are adapted to the type of environment in which they live and the food that they eat. Of the 572 bird species recorded in the Philippines, 172 species are endemic or found only in the Philippines. We have here the monkey-eating eagle, the serpent eagle, and the bleeding heart. So here are some examples of uh, the endemic birds in the Philippines. Birds which are only found in the Philippines. Next, we have class mammalia, from the word mama, which means breast. Mammals are warm-blooded animals who give birth to their younger ones. They have mammary glands that help them produce milk to feed their younger ones. Their body is covered with hair or fur. Skin has sweat glands. They have four chambered heart. The Philippines has 207 species of land mammals. You have here the dugong or the manatee, bats, you also have these types of mammals. We have the Philippine garshear. and uniqueness of Philippine biodiversity. A large percentage of all species can only be found or endemic in the Philippines. The Philippines has more than 52,177 described species, half of which are endemic or found nowhere else on Earth. In terms of terrestrial vertebrates, the Philippines is known to host 1,238 species, of which 618, or 50%, is endemic. In terms of fishes, the Philippines counts at least 3,214 species, of which about 121 are endemic and 76 threatened. In bird endemism, the Philippines has 718 known species of bird. Fifth, in mammal endemism, the Philippines has 200 species of land mammals. Eight, in reptile endemism, the Philippines has 352 known species of reptiles. Five of seven known marine turtles in the world are found in the Philippines. Example is this threatened species of turtle, which is the green sea turtle. The islands of the Philippines host one of the greatest concentrations of wildlife species in the world, at least 20,000 of which cannot be found anywhere else. It has been shown that biodiversity of an area has a large impact on the ecosystem stability of that area. Areas with high levels of species and genetic diversity are likely to have a more complex ecosystem with a variety of food webs and biotic interactions. At this point, let us check your understanding. Number one, which of the following functions or characteristics is shared by all individuals in the animal kingdom? A. Locomotion B. Heterotrophic C. 
segmentation, D. Sexual reproduction. Number two, an animal is discovered that has an exoskeleton, sucking mouth parts, head fused with thorax, no wings, and four pairs of walking legs. What animal could this possibly be? A. Insects B. Arachnids C. Crustaceans D. Chilopods Number 3. Aretha is walking near the forest. She found a wounded organism which is not familiar to her. She observed that the organism is covered with fur bilaterally symmetrical, and with the memory gland. The organism is more likely to be a blank. A worm, B reptile, C bird, D mammal. Number 4. All of the following animal groups are cold-blooded except for one. Which one is not cold-blooded? A bird, B fish, C reptile, D amphibian. Number 5. Which are the group of vertebrates? A. Mammals, bugs, spiders, fish, and birds. B. Snakes, turtles, frogs, bugs, and birds. C. Mammals, birds, fish, reptiles, and amphibians. Letter D. Worms, insects, spiders, jellyfish, and sponges. Number 6. Which group of invertebrates does a clam belong to? A. Echinoderms B. Annelids C. Nematodes D. Mollusks Number 7. Which group of animals breathe with gills as young and breathe with lungs on land? A. Reptiles B. Amphibians C. Fish D. Mammals Number 8. Butterflies, bumblebees, and spiders are examples of which group? A. Sponges, B. Nidarians, C. Arthropods, D. Annelids. Number 9. This picture is an example of which group of invertebrates? A. Mollusks B. Sponges C. Echinoderms D. Arthropods And number 10, to which phylum does the leech, earthworm, and sandworm belongs? A. Porifera B. Anelida C. Nidaria D. Mollusca Alright, let us have the answers. Number 1, B Number 2, B Number 3, D 4, A 5, C Number 6, D 7, B Number 8, C Number 9, B And number 10, B Thank you for watching this video lesson.